Well, hey there, everyone. Today we are... I'm Dr. Janelle Anderson, former college professor turned manager in a large corporation turned entrepreneur. And not just any entrepreneur. I've made it my life's work to make organizational life more effective and fulfilling. So welcome to Working Conversations, the podcast where we digest and translate research and ideas on workplace dynamics and serve up to you the most interesting and actionable strategies to make your workplace conversations and your relationships more effective, productive, and influential. If you're looking for proven tools for your workplace toolbox, you're in the right place. Now, let's get after it. are talking about a really valuable point in your day, and that is your commute. Yes, you heard me correctly, your commute. Now, some of you are thinking, but wait a minute, Janelle, I am working from home right now. I don't have a commute. And some of the rest of you are saying, well, what about my commute? It's just an opportunity to get from point A to point B. Well, in both cases, I want to add to your thinking about the purpose that your commute serves. And this is actually something I've been thinking about and talking about for a long time, the value of the commute. But especially in this time of pandemic, when so many people have found themselves working from home, I think revisiting the commute is more important than ever. And here's why. The commute serves as a liminal period in your day. Liminal means between things. You're on a threshold. You're crossing a threshold of leaving your personal life, and then you're in this liminal space. Again, when you were, for those of you who are working from home now, used to be co-located, you were then engaging in some mode of transportation to get from point A to point B in that liminal period, and then you would literally cross another threshold, that is, stepping into your place of work, and then assuming a different part of your identity. If you are now working from home, you may have lost that critical liminal period in your day, that time when you are between things. Again, it serves a valuable purpose beyond simply transportation. I mean, it's not just about getting from point A to point B in physical space. You are also getting from point A to point B in your mind. The commute and that liminal period helps you disconnect from one part of your identity, your personal identity, and ready yourself for connecting with another part of your identity, your professional identity. So if you lose the commute, you may be losing that distinct boundary of going from personal to professional. Now, of course, when we step into the workplace, we are not necessarily stepping out of one personality. We're just stepping out of one part of our our identity, our personal life to our professional life. You're still obviously the same person. The things that you care about change when you are at work versus when you are at home. And that commute is a critical piece of helping you make that shift in the things that you care about for the next, you know, several hours. And if you're working from home with children distance learning, it might even just be for the next several minutes until you get that first interruption. Now, I, again, I'm advocating if you are working from home that you add back in a commute. Now, I do not necessarily mean that you get in your car and drive around for 20 minutes. That would be ridiculous and not helpful for the environment or many other things. I'm gonna give you some other ideas about how you can put that commute back in place. If you are not working from home, this episode is still really valuable for you. You can adapt most of the tips and techniques that I'm gonna talk about in this episode to your current commute to make it more intentional and more useful so that you are spending that liminal period in your day, that time when you are between things, when you have crossed one threshold and before you have gotten to that next threshold, the most useful and helpful to really maximize that time and maximize your day. All right, now I probably have some of your you know, your attention and you're thinking, whoa, whoa, what am I supposed to do if I'm not supposed to get in my car and drive around? What else is there? Well, as you think about whether you were driving to work or taking public transportation to work or whatever mode of transportation you were taking, you were probably also doing something else. You might have been thoughtfully planning your day and thinking about what was coming, what's coming you know, down the pike for the rest of the day. You might have been listening to a podcast much like this one and drinking your morning coffee. And, and any other things. So I want to I want to bring those ideas back to you and have you be really present to them. So I'm going to give you some ideas for your morning commute. Again, these might be as similar to what you were doing prior to uh, working from home. For some of you, it might be a podcast and coffee because that's what you did when you were in the car or on the bus is you listened to a podcast while you drank your morning beverage. Another idea is 
listening to the radio. Perhaps you're a news junkie and you need that fix of morning news. Go ahead and grab that, but do that intentionally. Not while you're also eating breakfast and preparing the kids for their day and all of that, but take a moment or two, you know, five minutes sometimes is sufficient to just sit down and be really present with the morning news. Again, you might be consuming it online in reading fashion. You might be listening to it or streaming it, whatever works for you. Another thing that many people often used to do on their drive to work is listen to the radio, listening to music. So whether that's tuning into your local radio station that you really enjoy and catching up with those DJs and the music, or whether that means dialing up some of the music that you enjoy, again, either from a streaming service or music that you already have on file. Another thing that you could do is add in a walk. One of my neighbors takes a quick walk around the block once she's had her morning coffee and her breakfast and she's ready for the day. A quick walk around the block. I see her out there every single morning doing her quick walk before her day starts. You could also add to that because there's a really good chance that you have, if you live with other people or animals, that they might, uh, dogs in particular, they might need a, a morning commute or the equivalent of it as well. So you might add to your walk your children or your dog or your partner or your spouse and make that some time when everybody is crossing that liminal period together where you're talking about what's coming up in their school day, what's coming up in your spouse's work day and so forth. And your dog is just going to love the time out, outdoors with you anyway. Another thing that you could do is if you used to bike to work and the weather allows it, you could take a short bike ride in the morning again before you step into your professional identity. Now I'll give you a page from my book. I do several of those things on a rotating basis, but the one thing that I do every single morning, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my morning with getting kids ready and I get up early, I walk the dog and I have a bunch of me time early in the morning. That's just for me, but that doesn't necessarily serve the purpose of my commute. After I've done my me time, I'm helping the kids with their breakfast and getting everybody all set for their school day. And then my commute is a sweep of the kitchen. Now I hate dishes in the sink. I hate even more dishes piled up on top of the dishwasher. I need to get those dishes at least washed in and into the drying rack or loaded up into the dishwasher. I feel at peace when that area is clear and now I am ready to focus. And here's one other thing. If you take on something like that, feel complete about it. It doesn't, it's not always like my kitchen is completely buttoned up and, and looking perfect. But if I just get those dishes handled, and I feel complete about that, now I'm ready to go on to the next thing because those dishes aren't hanging out there for me. I'm ready to move into my professional identity. For me, that that physical commute then is simply a trip down the stairs to my office. Now that's a trip that I do over and over and over throughout the day. So that trip itself can't necessarily feel like my commute because I'm doing it so many times a day. But that one last sweep of the kitchen, feeling at peace when that area is clear. Now I can go focus. I feel complete. And now I can step into my professional identity. Now the intention here is to make a clear separation from your home life to your professional life, even when those two things are occupying the same space. Now I know plenty of people who are, who have found themselves working from home in this pandemic, don't have a home office, don't have a guest room, a spare bedroom, or anything like that. They are officing off of the kitchen counter. They're officing off off of their dining room table. So they don't have a clear separation of space. This is not necessarily about a clear separation of space. This is about a clear separation of boundary in your mind. And for some of you, if your life is like me, your home life might impinge upon your work day. (laughs) Some days a lot. Again, with a couple of kids uh, doing distance learning during this pandemic, uh, it can be a lot of interruptions. And if you have those interruptions, I want to encourage you to take a beat when you are done rebooting your kid's Chromebook or whatever that interruption was. Take a beat and refocus on work. Remember that your focus is on work for the day. Declare that task complete, recommit to your work. And you may find yourself doing that over and over throughout the day. But if you don't, then you're gonna have all these other things hanging out in your head that, you know, oh gosh, I gotta gotta do something long-term about that Chromebook. Well, if those ideas are coming up, just make make those on a list. Write that stuff down because once you get that out of your head and into some other existent system, it's going to stop popping into your head all day long. Likewise, if you've got other home tasks that keep popping up in your mind, you wanna jot those down so that you've got those, again, captured somewhere. It's then they're less likely to keep popping up if you've written them down somewhere. 
All right, so that was your morning commute. Now, I also want to talk about the end of the day. Now, for some of you, the end of the day might even be way more important than your morning commute. In this pandemic, with so many people working from home who have not been traditionally working from home, people are reporting that they are not stopping work at the end of the day, that they don't have clear boundaries, that they are working all the time, that they are answering that one last email from their boss, or they want to keep that inbox to zero. And so they are constantly in the inbox and their work is continually bleeding into their personal time. And if that sounds like you, then pay close attention here because you're going to get some tips and strategies to really put some boundaries in place. This episode is made possible by Instacart. If you haven't already started using Instacart, now is the time, my friend. Now, I'm the first one to say that I actually enjoy a trip to the grocery store. I really do. But you know what I like doing even better? Making this podcast. When I was deep in the development of this podcast, outlining and recording the first few episodes, my kids reminded me that they needed to eat. Instacart to the rescue. In absolutely record time, Magnolia, my Instacart shopper that day, delivered chicken nuggets, milk, avocados, fresh berries, and a host of other groceries we needed. When life gets busy, or when you just want to feel like royalty and have someone do it for you, there's Instacart. Get $10 off your first order when you sign up at workingconversations.com forward slash Instacart. Now, back to the show. Now, if you live with other people, they notice this. They see you on your phone all the time or gravitating back to your laptop all the time or disappearing into the guest room, the home office, or wherever it is you do your work. And let me tell you this, they want more of you. That's right. They want more of you. They want to see you. They don't want to see you just, they don't want to see you connected to your work all the time. And we are not setting a good example for our children if we are connected to our work 24 seven. We need boundaries. We need to demonstrate personal and professional boundaries for them. Now, if you don't live with other people, you may not be getting that feedback. So you need to captain this for yourself. Do not let you become a work burnout casualty or fatality of this work from home time. That is the new risk in our work from home environment, burnout. And let me tell you, all the prognosticators and senior leaders of corporations and everybody thought going into this that the biggest risk in everybody suddenly working from home was going to be productivity. And productivity has soared in this work from home time, in part because people are having such a hard time disconnecting from work. The biggest risk has become burnout. So do not let yourself be a casualty. Do not let yourself be a fatality. You need a clear separation at the end of your workday. Again, you need to step into that liminal period to disconnect from your professional identity and step back into your personal identity. And I don't care if your personal identity has six kids, three dogs, and a couple of guinea pigs in it, or if your personal identity has more to do with catching up with a few friends and binge watching Netflix. I don't care what you're doing during your personal time. And each one of you is going to have a, you know, anywhere from a slightly to a vastly different personal life than, than I do. But at the end of the day, that clear separation from your workday is critical for you to avoid burnout and have a healthy emotional and personal life as much as one can in this pandemic. Now let's think back to the co-located workday. And for some of you, you're still in that co-located workday, handling those critical services. And for that, we absolutely thank you. At the end of the day, when we are co-located, we have leave-taking behaviors. That's right, leave-taking behaviors. Now remember, earlier in my career, I was a college professor. Standing at the front of the room, there is nothing more visible than leave-taking behaviors from a bunch of college students. The leave-taking behaviors are hysterical. As soon as there's like five minutes left in class, there's all this shuffling of papers, backpacks, computers closing, all this like noise in the room and all this physical movement in the room because the students are taking these leave-taking behaviors. Again, it's hysterical from the front of the room. Now, at the office, it's also very visible. At the office, this is when you walk around, say goodnight to your colleagues, um, and, and say goodbye, say see you tomorrow. You might be running off to pick up a kid from daycare or sports practice, and you are gathering up your things and literally leaving. You're closing down your workstation. You're closing the door to your office or pushing your chair into your cubicle. You are literally leaving. 
Depending on the weather, you may be grabbing a coat, a jacket, gloves, a hat, and putting them on and walking out the door. That has a very symbolic, that serves a very symbolic role in the end of your workday. And I absolutely, this is an imperative for you, take on an evening commute. Absolutely take on an evening commute. Now I'm gonna give you some ideas. Now you can take any one of those ideas for your morning commute and reverse it because many of you in the co-located days were doing pretty much the same thing on your morning, uh, on your afternoon commute as you were in your morning commute. So whether that's a podcast or catching up with the news at the end of the day, listening to music, um, again, you might add in a walk, walking with the kids, the dog, the partner or spouse. Um, calling a friend is another great thing to do for your end of day routine. You can even call that friend while you're on a walk. You can do a walk and talk. Maybe you used to walk with a friend after work or you miss going to the gym or whatever it is. So you pick up the phone and do a walk and talk and schedule that with a friend. And you could take five different friends and have a walk, a quick walk and talk, catch up with them once a week or even 10 friends and do that once every other week. And man, wouldn't that be nice? If one of your friends called you and said, hey, can we schedule like every other Monday for us to just talk for 20 minutes and catch up with each other? That would be lovely. So you can add in that walk and talk as your commute. Again, if you like to bike or you used to bike as your commute, maybe you're going to add that. Now, here's a couple of other ideas that are not necessarily the same as what you might do in your morning commute. One of the things you can do is you can make a list for what to do tomorrow. And that's really going to help clear out what's in your head. Those things that just like the, the personal things are sometimes buzzing during your workday, the professional things are sometimes buzzing during your personal time. So if you can make a list for what you need to do tomorrow and get that stuff out of your head, it's less likely to be a disturbance in your personal time throughout the rest of the evening. Another thing you can do is you can update your planner or review your schedule for the next day. Again, you're getting your ducks in a row. One other idea, which is somewhat related to, but different from that, is to take a moment to evaluate your day. If you're using, whether it's a paper planner or looking at your online calendar or your to-do list, taking a look at what you planned to do for the day and then what you actually did for the day and seeing what got done, why, and what was really the quality and the contours of your day. And, and, and then based on your evaluation of the day, making some plans for slight adjustments for the next day to make your next day 1% better. Another thing that you can do is you can declare your day complete. Maybe you don't have time to take a walk around the block because you worked right up into the time that you need to now go start preparing dinner for your family or whatever it is that's gonna come next for you. Simply declaring your day complete might sound something like this. I declare this work day to have come to an end. I did the best I could today given the circumstances that I found myself in. This day is complete. Something as simple as that takes about 15 or 20 seconds to do whether you say it out loud or whether you simply think it while you are shutting down the computer. And that's right, my friends, shut down the computer. If you don't, it is going to be like a magnet pulling you towards it all throughout the evening to check and see if there's one more email or if you've got a response from that person or whatever it is that might pop into your head. So shut down that computer. Let me give you a quick page from my evening commute. This is what I do. I evaluate my day. I absolutely look over what my to-do list was, what my calendar looked like, how much of that actually got done. I'm looking for check marks next to things because I love to check things off my list, even in my daily calendar. Um, you've probably heard me talk about Clever Fox before, but I, uh, and right at the bottom of the day in Clever Fox, there is an opportunity to rate my productivity. So I absolutely do that and I take a few notes about what worked, what didn't work in this day and what I want to do different the next day. I look to my next day's calendar. If I have any of those hard meetings that I know are not going to change, I write those in ink in my next day's calendar in my Clever Fox Planner and also look to see what might be coming up in terms of those uh, the, the more flexible time I have and what projects I might schedule into those. And then I declare my day complete and I declare that I did the best I, ca I can in the day that I had, much like, I just, uh, much like the example I just shared. I declare this day complete. I did the best I could given the circumstances I was under and I look forward to tomorrow. And then I shut that computer down. Also, I make a point not to look at work email in the evening or early the next morning. No work until after my morning commute the following morning. 
And that helps me have healthy boundaries so that I can be present with my family. Now, sometimes my kids don't want to be present with me because they're at an age where they want to sometimes do other things. But if they do want to be present with me, watch a TV show together, watch a movie together, do some other sort of activity, I can be 100% present with them because I'm not, you know, I don't have half my brain still in work for the day. So the commute is going to help you put boundaries on your day. Absolutely critical, especially in this time with so many of us working from home. We need boundaries in our day. We need to do everything we can to mitigate against the risk of burnout because it is out there, my friends, and I don't want it to get you. Now come back and listen to this episode again if you find your work and home life all tangled up in one another. When you can get these boundaries in place and really use that liminal period of your commute intentionally, you will be a better contributor, you will be a better colleague, you will be a better leader, And by far, you will be a better human being to those outside of your work life if you can disconnect from work and really, truly, intentionally be with them. Not just be in proximity of them, but be with them. I challenge you to take on a morning commute, take on an afternoon commute, and let me know how that changes for you. Let me know what some of your best commute ideas are. I would love to hear them and perhaps maybe do another episode on this and share your ideas back with the rest of the community here. In the next episode of Working Conversations, we're going to be focusing on techniques to stay focused and productive during your workday. So make sure you stay tuned for that episode. We're going to talk about 10 different techniques that you can use throughout your day to keep your focus on work because there's so many things that drawing, that are drawing our focus away from work in these crazy times that we're living in these days. So again, whether you're working from home or working in your office environment, those techniques are really going to help you stay focused and crank out your work and be as productive as you possibly can. So stay tuned for that episode and thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head on over to Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts and give us five stars and a quick review. It really makes a difference and it keeps us bringing you valuable content that you can put into play in your life. I'm Dr. Janelle Anderson, and this is Working Conversations.